Hello Euroboxes, we are back with another Eurovox video and today we are reacting to Poland's choice, Dulia, for Eurovision 2019. So girls, what do you think? Laura, this, this, does the, blah, 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 blah. So girls. <laughs> So girls, what do you think? Does this choice come as a surprise or what is your impression, Laura? Um, well, from what I've seen of them, they're obviously quite traditional in sort of how they style themselves and, you know, traditional country music can, you know, be quite successful. It's worked in the past. I mean, I'm really hoping that it's not going to be a milk churning extravaganza um, mm. because I think we did that once and once was enough. Um, but yeah, like I, I quite like it when countries do something that is a bit more sort of traditional because sometimes I think when you get too much pop stuff, it can kind of bleed into each other a little bit and you can't always tell them apart. But the ones that are of a culture that isn't necessarily your own, I think you always remember them a bit more than the others. Yeah. What do you think, Liliana? I actually quite like the idea of um, doing a more traditional song because obviously last year, a few years back, we kind of had a song that, yes, it was good. I personally liked it, but you wouldn't say, oh, that's Poland. But this will definitely bring the traditional vibes so that you can actually bring their country to Eurovision to sort of show that off. So I think it's going to be something that's quite different. It's going to be quite authentic, 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 mm -hmm. just as Lara said. So I think that's going to be something that's really sort of going to stand out. And I think it's going to do well for them to be if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, and also, I'm not sure if you've heard them sing, but the way they harmonize together is very lovely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and especially their styling, their dresses, it's so so colorful, it like draws you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love a harmonizing girl band. Um, Ojinyi, or however you pronounce og 3 ne which I've never quite mastered. Um, one of my absolute favorites that year, and I kind of mm -hmm. love, like, I love when women sing in harmony. I think it's really gorgeous. So, yeah, all up for it. Yeah, but I think it really depends on how they do it because they could go down the line of sort of, I like, say, gimmicky, you know, sort of playing a bit too heavily on the traditional side, or they could just do it in a way that is definitely traditional but still sort of classy. And I think it just depends on how they present it on stage is going to be quite important as well. The the obvious comparison we have is Miss Lovianya, yeah. uh, <laughs> Poland 2014 which was the same kind of dresses, just like way, way shorter. So it's nice to see what the cut. real... Exactly, and lower cut. I didn't know how to express that properly in English. In proper English. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> so now I think we have a more um, truthful, rep accurate representation of how those costumes are supposed to look. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, my Sloveni was kind of sort of where traditional meets modern like it was very much trying not to be too traditional it was trying to put that modern sexy spin on it which I can understand why you would do it but yeah I think it'll be interesting to see something that is actually more tradition rather than tradition trying to be sexy and modern yeah because I've heard some of like the older songs they've done and I think they sort of blend the two quite well not that it's so traditional that it gets boring but that it still keeps it current and sort of relevant and something that people are actually going to want to listen to so I think that's important as well not to alienate people yeah I'm not sure if you've watched the covers they've done from other singers like the most famous cover they have is Enjoy the Silent that um, even the page mode um, posted about it and shared it on their social media. So I think that is when it all started for them. It's folk music can go in Eurovision can go both ways. It can do really well or it can do really, it can place really bad. But um, as you said, Laura, we all love to see some folk in Eurovision. And uh, uh, it's, it's nice to have this music that is not from your country and learn more about it or at least listen to it because it is true that that is what stays if it's something you've never or you're not used to and you suddenly see it, it's like wow nice yeah yeah absolutely like a lot of the ones that you remember are the ones that aren't the stuff that you usually listen to and you you get that through the song being different through the language being different through the styling the staging being different so mm. If they kind of do all those things well, and I don't see any reason why it mm -hmm. couldn't go well. I mean, I say all this, we've not heard the song yet. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the song's going to be awful, who knows? 
but they could cut they could talking about the songs they could maybe sing in polish that would be really nice and i think the way they sing it must be very liberating like they <laughs> but i think you're right because they haven't to my memory they haven't done their own songs their own language since 2014 so i think if they're trying to be different trying to sort of get higher up in the sort of like ranking i think as you, your own language be the way to go because you know as well like fuego was great last year but if you had 40 fuegos it wouldn't stand out Mm-hmm. Like it wouldn't be as good, so you do need to have a variety for it to actually make it interesting and people actually want to watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, kind of playing the odds, I would suspect what would work out best for them is having probably half and half, half Polish, half English, because mm-hmm. statistically songs in English do better because more people speak English, um, but at the same time, if you do a song that you know has your own language in it, then you know it can be more poignant. Um, so yeah. I, I would, if I had, if I was advising them, which I'm obviously not, but I would say probably do half and half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's a really good way to distinguish or to like draw themselves apart from uh, last year. That was a very commercial, very typical European song. It wouldn't, you wouldn't sit and watch it and think, oh, that's Poland. It could have been any country. So this is a good statement for Poland. Like, hi, we're Poland. Nice to meet you. We will host. Euro- junior Eurovision this year, so here is a little bit of more about us. Bam. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. But people are saying that they've actually already released the song, but well, we've already heard it, because there's a song, Palicia, I don't know if you've heard it, that was released back in November, and some fans are saying, well, maybe that's a song, because it was released, obviously, after the September 1st rule. And I listened to that, and I think it does quite well, because it, it, in its current state, it is all Polish, but the chorus is memorable. And I think with foreign songs, if, it has to be that earworm song because mm-hmm. if it's not, we're all just going to forget it and it's not going to work out. So it could do well in that respect. Indeed, indeed. So uh, then I'll go check out the song as soon as I finish this because if that's the song that's going, I will really want to. Yeah. React get in your to head. It. Get it in yeah. my head. Yeah. But can you describe more or less how the song is? Is it folk? Is it like a ballad? Is it it a more quick tempo? Um, I wouldn't describe it as a ballad. I think it's sort of, it's not completely up tempo, it's kind of in between. You can definitely tell it's folk and that it's got the Eastern European vibes very clear in it. But again, I just, I think the chorus just works quite well because I'm not personally a fan of that type of music. It's not going to, it's not something that's going to go on my playlist, but it's something I can still appreciate. But even that song, I found myself playing it like three times in a row just because it just had something about it. So I think the chorus in it is something that people will remember and they're just going to want to play it a good few times, I think. But you have to judge yourselves. But that's a great starter. That's a great yeah. introduction of the song. Anything else you want to say, guys, before I wrap it up? Yeah. I mean, in all the pictures I've seen of them, I do like their outfits very mm-hmm. much. Yeah. It'll be very yeah. memorable, so. Yeah. I hope they, they wear these crown roses. Yeah. yeah. I think and the costume makes them on point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all the pictures of them, their hair is in these really fancy braids, which I really like because I can't do my hair because it's too short. Yeah, same, I'm like, jealous. Really know what I'm <laughs> okay, guys, but until we listen to the song and the song is officially released, we can't say anything more about Tulia from Poland. So stay tuned for the next video about Poland and the next videos we will put up about the rest of the countries. And don't forget to like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And leave us a comment and if you know more about Tulia let us know and point us to the right directions where should we listen to what click links we should click and listen and things like that so see you next time bye